Hi, welcome to Joanna's DIY Life. This is a Sew It Saturday, and I'm going to be doing the dish towels that you previously just saw. Um, I got tired of having dish towels and, you know, pot holders that match, but you can't fold the pot holder. I'll explain when I'm sewing, you know, a little better. So this is a way to make a towel where you can see the pot holder and the towel. And also, um, I just thought the overalls ones was so cute and you know, I thought about this after I did the video last week and thought this is, you know, overalls. A man wears, you know, like, um, what do they call those things? Overalls or whatever, you know. And uh, so that's what it reminded me of. So, you know, a man could have that in his, his kitchen or any of them for that matter. But anyways, I just thought that was so cute. So I'm going to show you how to do it. So let's go. So first off... I wanted to show you I got a June Taylor mat because I wanted one with my numbers on this side I ordered one they were on this side same as my gray one but this one does not have my little lines in between and I found it the cheapest at Hobby Lobby for $36.99 that was the cheapest I could find it but I'm not sure if I'm gonna like it so if any of y'all have this June Taylor mat, let me know how you like it. They say that it doesn't dull your blade like the, uh, you know, the ones under here, the self-healing. It still needs to get where it'll relax and lay flat. But anyways, if you have this mat, just tell me if you like it or not, because I would like to know. But uh, for the first towel, you know, I'm tired of not being able to see, you know, if you was to do the pot holder towel, you fold it, you know, I had a video on it, and then you sew it down where you're only going to see a chicken. And over here, you'd have an upside down truck. So, I'm going to take the towel, cut it in two pieces, I'm going to show you two towels today. And then I'm done with towels, I do believe. But anyway, you fold your towel under, and all you do is pinch it to where like I did last week you have your tea towel even and you know this is visible and it fits your piece here okay then what you're gonna do is you're gonna grab it turn it over and you're gonna take your ruler and you're gonna cut it off even cut these little corners off all you're going to do is just lay your ruler down. Got to cut it down with these, not even with these. So you're going to cut, you know, that much off. Make sure it's even, like I said, and then serge or zigzag your towel shut. This one is zigzagged, okay? So once you get that done, you're going to take your, your dish towel. And what you're going to do is you're going to, do what you call stitch in the ditch and that's go over the stitches you've already got here now your stitches may look different these are pretty long it depends on how you set your your towel but you want to set this on here oh my bad you want this behind it this won't unravel once you surge or zigzag now scrunch your towel up and get it on your your uh whatever this thing, pot holder. <laughs> now you want it right on the edge. You don't want it going halfway up your, your pot holder. And you can feel that edge, but you wanna make sure you catch it. Once you get it on here, now I am going to take a glue stick so I don't have to pin, okay? These are just a Dollar Tree glue stick. They don't get messed up under your sewing machine or anything. So I am just going to glue and press and then glue and press. Make sure you get your middle where you're going and this will wash out when you wash it so it doesn't matter if it's stuck to the back. This towel is so simple y'all. Let that sit and all you got to do is take it to your machine 
is just sew across this stitch that's already sewn and go up the sides just a little bit. That's all you have to do for the bottom of this towel. So that's what I'm going to go do. Stitch right on my stitch right here. Now if you want to be, uh, if you want pins in it, you can do that this way. Just pin it, but when you glue it, it's on there. So I'm going to go sew this. So it's on. The glue will wash out. I know it's ugly, but the glue will wash out. I did end up pinning it uh, through this way so that I know it didn't move and it stayed right on that line. And then your stitch is not even visible on the front side. Now, you can just bend this back if you want to. Um, that's up to you, but we're going to put a tag back here, and I, I took one to show you. You can seam rip that, pull it off, pull it back here, cut it off and tuck it under, and it'll do the same thing. It ain't going to matter. I'm just going to leave mine on here and fold it down. My husband is trying to put a light in my bathroom if y'all hear noise. If you don't, that's fine too. Let me show you how, you know, I'm, I'm going to put fuse on this. Um, somebody asked me, you don't, you don't really move it at first when you're fusing. Okay, you're going to need a piece that's 4.5 wide by 7.5 long. This is going to be a strap, okay? And I cut it out and I'm going to lay it down here. On this right here and I I am so sorry if you hear that buzzing that cracks me up but anyway I'm just gonna cut around this and I want it none none of this showing it sticks to your iron so you don't want any of that showing if you can absolutely help it and if you flip it over then it'll stick to your ironing board Save any scraps that you may have of this. Put it in a storage bin or whatever because if I had a scrap, I wouldn't have to be, you know, cutting the whole length of my roll. But, uh, you know, I didn't. So I'll save that piece for Lord knows what. And then you're just going to make sure you trim this off. I'm cutting a little bit of my fabric because it doesn't look even to me I don't know what happened but anyway of course I'm not going to save this little scrap piece of paper or interfacing so what you do is like I said make sure that your fabric goes the length of your interfacing and you're just going to set your iron no steam my bad no steam just set your iron down and that tacks it and then once you get it down, you can do it this way too if that's your desire. But once you see that there's no bubbles or dots down here anymore, then you can move your iron over it. But you have to tack it down first or it will wrinkle and you won't be able to um, use it on your fabric. So what you're going to do with your strap now is fold it in half. And you can press it to hold it. Take your fabric, fold one end up. That way when we close that off, we don't have to worry about that end, okay? It'll already be closed off. So iron up just a smidgen. Y'all know what a smidgen is? It's about that much right there. Now I'm going to go over here to the machine, and I'm not going to sew this side. I'm going to sew here and down and leave this end open. Now you'll have it that looks like this. This end is open. What you're going to do is take a pokey tool, whatever you got, pencil will work. Pull your two pieces apart. Push that forward. Now take your pencil and just pull. And then you flip it right on out. And then now, 
I'm going to take my favorite tool and I'm going to poke my corners out. This is going to be a strap and I'm using snaps. Now you can use a button. If you know how to make a buttonhole, make a buttonhole. Um, that's up to you. Now look, see that is already folded in because you sewn it that way. So I'm going to take this end and I am going to simply push towards the outside and this helps get my fabric a little further out there, okay? Now these don't have to be perfect down here. Um, they should match up, but they don't got to be perfect. So I'm just going to give it a quick press. That just helps it stay. I don't know. It's a magic thing too. Okay. So this end, now you can stitch around it if you want to. That's your preference. I am not on this one, but you just, you take this end that's already finished and you're going to place it in the middle right here. And you're going to stitch across that line right there again. Okay. That's all you're going to do. Now you could have folded this up, but that raw edge was going to be showing. This ensures you close this off and you have no raw edge. But you do want to make sure that this little doodad stays down. So I'm going to put a pin right here to make sure this don't move on me because, you know, I don't need it coming up. I want it tight. And then I'm going to place this right here. And then I'm simply going to stitch across this right here. So now you have this down, you have this sewn on. This is where I said, now you can attach a button. Okay. It's up to you, whatever you want to do. You can sew a button here, put a button hole right here and button this on. And that would be cute. But I am just simply going to add a snap. Okay. So if you've been with me any amount of time at all, you know I love my snap setter. Um, somebody asked me about this. I'll do a tutorial on it, and you can watch that if you want to. But uh, to set a snap, all I'm going to do is I'm going to take my pokey thing, and I'm going to poke where I want the snap, which would be right there. And I'm just going to poke through everything. And it'll come out back here, okay? And that'll show me where... I want my want my little snap. See that hole right there? There's a hole right there. That's where my snaps are going to be. And I'm just going to use white ones. You need two of the pointy things, and you need one of one and uh, one of the other. You, there's a male and a female. And um, when you do this, you know you need a snap here. So you're going to put this one in the back. I'm just going to move that back, and I'm going to put that there. Now I've got an old pin, and this pushes them pushes them down for me so it's easier. Uh, I just took the thing out of a pen and yeah, there you go. So push that down. Oh shoot. There it popped. Now I'm going to take my snap setter and I'm just going to go over this. You might have to pull this around behind here. Make sure everything is where it needs to be. And then set your snap middle. Your snap middle will go go down. This thing got in my way, I think. I may need to re-push that. So now you want this one on the top because when you fold it over, it needs to snap, of course. So you push this one through. And then put your end on. There it snapped. And then snap that right under that setter and push down. This helps me because I have carpal tunnel and I can't squeeze, but uh, there you go. Easy peasy. Now you can see your towel and your pot holder. It don't look that bad on the back. If you want to fold this down and sew it, you're welcome to, but then it would stick out this edge. That's just, you do you, whatever you want to do. This is just an idea. This is just what I had. And this is the easiest way to do it. And I like it. So, yeah. 
So I want you all to see what I'm doing because I'm going to pleat twice. I'm going to pleat once. Okay. And that's going to stay right there. And then I'm going to grab this and I'm going to pleat this over. Okay. On itself. That way I have more design showing. You see what I'm saying? So now when I put my doodad on there, it's going to be right. So I'm going to take this and I'm going to pinch all of this and I'm going to flip it upside down and I'm going to kind of even this up. Okay. So now that I have it, I'm going to go over here and I'm going to straight stitch right down this just to, just to hold it so I can do what I got to do. So just a straight stitch across here is all you got to do. Make sure you catch all of your pleats. So my towel is sewn across. And if you get to this point and it starts coming up, which it probably will, just leave your needle down, lift your presser foot, push this under, put your foot back down, and do the same for the other one if you have problems, okay? That's done, set that to the side. Now you're gonna be working with your seven by seven inch two pieces. And you'll need a three and a half by four inch piece. You just need one. You need two of the seven by seven and two four by eight. These are going to be the straps. This is going to be the body and this will be a cute little pocket. Okay. This is so darling. Okay. So I'm going to show you how to do the pocket. So you'll take your three by five by four and you want it this way. So you fold it in half. This is no measurement, just however you want. You just, you're just gonna cut the corner from the middle out just to form your little, your little pocket, okay? Now, I do use a glue stick and an iron. And what I like to do first is my sides here. So I'm going to take my glue stick and I'm going to glue here and I'm going to fold this in and push it down tight. Then I'm going to do the same on the other side. Make sure when you're doing this, you're folding it about the same size all the way around. You don't want a wonky pocket. Okay. You don't want a wonky pocket. Just make sure you keep pushing that down. Now I'm going to take my top and I'm going to go down a little bit farther because you know you want a, a little wider um, stitch on that right there because a pocket does have that. So I'm just going to go down a little bit farther, not too much because this is a tiny pocket, okay? And I'm just going to fold that down. Now I'm going to take and glue real good right here and I'm going to fold my side over making sure my top stays straight, okay? It's really important that your top stays straight. Now you're gonna do the same to the other side and just fold it over. Try to do the same width, y'all. That looks decent. This side needs to go over some more. So I'm going to bring this side over just a hair more. Just a hair, y'all. Just a hair, hair, hair. Okay, now I'm going to iron it, okay? And I'm going to put this on top. I don't know why it's magic. Just a two-by-four. They call them a, um, uh, well, I forget what they call it. But anyways, two-by-four works fine. So let me iron this, and I'll be right back. Okay, y'all. I hope you can see that. It's called a tailor's clapper okay it's just a piece of wood and you steam iron something set the wood on it i don't know it's magic but anyways it is in my amazon store if you're interested in one and you don't have a two by four but yeah i just i used two before but anyways look it just it's especially on that that mat i made it gets it all flat and it's not going anywhere that and the glue and anyways here we go okay straps so, two four by eight straps. All I'm going to do 
is take my strap and do it just like I did the other one. Okay. Okay, so you just sew one side down the side and you don't got to push that in. It's just not, it's going to be hidden. So then you're just going to uh, flip it inside out, clip your corners. It'll help it lay flatter, especially for when we're sewing. And then just turn it inside out. I have these listed in my Amazon store too. It just holds it for me so I can pull it down. It actually is supposed to go in the tube, but it uh, you can use this to poke it out, but I prefer this one. Now you want to make sure you push your seam out on these, okay? Because we're going to top stitch this to make it look a little, a little prettier uh, with red thread. You can use whatever color thread you want. You could use jean thread. If that suits your fancy, just whatever you want to do, okay? So press these, and then I'll show you what to do next. Now that I have them ironed, I am going to go on my machine, and I am using my 401A just because uh, it's a tougher machine and I'm going through jeans, okay? An older vintage machine works great on jeans. This pocket or this piece here you're going to go iron a piece up on both sides make sure these sides are evenly ironed okay you can use a glue stick to hold them up there as well that's up to you um that's just my preference you can pin it whatever you want to do so now I have that one that way. I'm going to take this one and I'm going to line it up and I'm going to go up the same distance. This, this helps me get them the same, same distance here. Sorry, trying to make sure I have my, my grain going the same way on this thing. Yep, they're the same. Let me show you this this thing. Okay. Let me get my iron. Let me get this doodad. Yeah. Regular iron. And it's at the highest setting for jeans. Mine goes to nine. This is the best iron ever, other than the beeping. Sorry, I stuck to my glue. See that? It's, it's got a rounded edge right there. So when you do this and you use the clapper or your 2x4, whatever you want to do, put steam on there and immediately put that down. Now hold for just a minute. Not with pressure. You just, you know, push down. I mean, it's not a lot of pressure. My line is so much thinner than this one. You can see the two. It flattens it out so nicely. So that's why I use this thing. Two by four people, two by four. It really works on that other thing. But anyhow, so now you have your two pieces, okay? Make sure when you put them together that they are lining up. Mine are lining up perfectly. Okay, so you want to take one of your pieces. Now you want to take your pocket and you want to sew your top on. Okay, so we're going to go do that. So there's my little pocket top. Now glue it on. Ugh. You just want to glue it in the middle. Okay, or put it in the middle, pin it in the middle if you want to. I don't want pins in this. That's just my preference. If you want to pin it, pin it. I don't want pins in it. You can actually move it down some. It's 
so it's going to be further down than it is up just a, just a smidge just a smidgen okay now we're going to go glue this on, or sew this on and sew these and then do these now the first thing you want to do sewing jean is change your needle to a 16 so i'm going to change my needle take this was a 12 so you could put it in your needle holder if you made one and then i'm going to insert my 16. what i'm going to do is i'm going to first sew my pocket on okay so i'm going to take my pocket first sorry if i'm in your way and i am just going to top stitch so when you top stitch i want my needle all the way over this way as far as it will go and then I'm going to bring this over and you just want the edge when you're top stitching. So I'm going to go, then I'm going to back stitch and then I'm going to go all the way around the edge of my pocket, pivoting where I need to turn. Don't forget to back stitch. Your pocket is on. I'm sorry if I'm in your in your way with my arm there. Now we're just going to take these and I'm going to do the same all the way around my strap just to add a little decorative touch and to get my strap flat. Now you're going to take this and you're going to put it on here. Oh, my bad. On here. You're going to leave a little room to sew. Okay. And we're going to tack that down. It'll be tucked in. I'm just going to tack it so I don't have to use pins when I do this next step. So you go in a little bit where you're going to sew it, see? And then just do a straight stitch and tack it down. That's all you got to do. Then I'm going to do the same to the other strap. Now I want my thickness to the outside. The thickness of the strap goes to the outside. I'll cut all these little strings when I'm done. Okay. Now at this time, if you want to cut your strings, just snip them off. No biggie. If you don't, you don't. It's just stuff you got to do later. Now with your straps inside, take your top. Oh, threads. Oh my God. Alright, put your top on your top. Okay, bottoms to bottoms. Leave your straps inside. And you're going to sew, moving my needle in the middle. Make sure you don't catch your strap here. All the way around this. Okay, I'm not going to pin it, I'm just going to hold it. You can pin it if you need to. But you're just going to go all the way around.
All right. Now you're going to clip your corners here and turn it inside out. You should have something that looks like this. Okay. Once we get our corners turned out. Now I'll show you what to do with your towel. Once you're all ironed and flattened down, you're going to take your towel and you're going to shove it in here. Now I, huh, of course, am going to glue it. Okay? And I'm just going to put glue all along this bottom right here. This is just my preference. It doesn't This glue does not stick in your needle for some reason a lot. So I'm just going to put my towel down and press it down. Okay? And then I'm going to take this piece and I'm going to glue it as well. And I'm going to feel the back to make sure these two are even. Okay. So I'm just going to take my glue and I'm going to go across this piece now. And I am going to get them even and push down. And there you go. Now I'm going to go to my machine. I'm not going to take you with me because you just seen me do this one. And all I'm going to do is I am going to top stitch all the way around this top right here and across this sealing my towel in. Okay. That's all you got to do. Now these are just my craft buttons, but how cute would that be? That would be so cute, but I'm not, uh, I'm not making a buttonhole today. I'm using snaps, but that would be so cute. Let me add my snaps and I'll show you what the finished thing looks like. Now when you put these snaps on, you're going to need four and you're going to have them all on the back. And then you're going to have your males and then your females or whatever you want to do. Um, just as long as you have the one that goes in the other. And then that way when you bring it over your stove, you s just simply snap. You ain't got to worry about buttons or anything else. And that hangs right from your stove. Now how cute is that? I love it. Wasn't that so fun? And the little coveralls one, or whatever they are, overalls, I don't know what to call them, were so stinking cute. So if you like this video, please give me a thumbs up. Consider subscribing to my channel because you really never know what you're gonna see around here. Ring that bell to be notified every time I upload a video so you don't miss no content. And with all that being said, remember that you are a blessing. Until next time. Bye.